Yes. Recording in progress in five, four, three, two, one. Yo, yo, what's going on? Ice Stream. Ice Stream Guru. Number one. Hey, man. Yo. I'm just, I know you can't what? see me right now. I'm just setting up. I can't see you because you are invisible. Smile. Smile, Jason. <laughs> How are you today? I'm doing great, man. It's a Monday morning. Just about to get my coffee. What about you? It's a good day, Monday, fun day, Sunday. There's a lot of uh, crazy events going on right now. As soon as I wake up in the morning, there's like 10 different, you know, new big headlines. It's not even one or two topics that we have to follow up on. So I feel like I have to wake up super early these days just to catch up with the world. Because by the time I wake up, so many laws and policies are being changed that it's like... You don't even know. Yeah. So this is why I think this is this podcast is really important to inform people in our community and in our circle and whoever is listening, because it's such an important time to be alive, right? It is. It's, it's real, it's raw, and it's relevant. And that's really what we want to bring to, to people right now is uh, content that you know, we get to use our voices, that our God-given voices, our, our throat chakras that allow us to speak up, which, you know, a lot of people believe, uh, Jason, that uh, it's being impeded. And the first thing, the first step I believe we have to overcome is, is the mindset. If you believe that you're being quieted, then you're in agreement with the collective that wants to do that. But if you believe that you have a voice and that you are a strong, a strong character and you have something to say, you know, um, and you can do it in a logical way as well, an entertaining way, then that's your right. So please join in. Let us know how you're feeling. Talk to us. Tell us what means, what, what, uh, what, what's going on in your life, what you notice is happening. Right. I think this, this is the most it's it's the most important time for people to come together and engage and communicate and get together and talk actually because i'm not seeing a lot of that recently to be honest i see a lot of people just quiet waiting for us to wake up tomorrow morning and hoping everything will go back to normal 2019 and prior to pandemic and what's going on so i i just would love to see more people come together and you know, um, just communicate, share, love. And uh, I know you've been through a lot of crazy times in your life. You were in L.A. during the riots yourself. So you've seen things go down. I haven't seen anything this big in my life when it comes to a pandemic or a global shutdown or state of emergency. This is the first time I've, I've heard about it. Um, so, you know, I know you always tell us, to stay calm and you know focus on your craft and do what you do and not kind of let things break you down but how has what has the pandemic taught you so far about the world and where we're headed um it's easily divided um it's easily controlled because um when you look at the resources uh, of, of finance and power, and when I'm saying power, not just authority, but power as in energy, um, when that is in the control of a very few, you realize how dependent we are on power. I mean, imagine us trying to have a podcast right now without having uh, electricity. You know, we'd have to find an alternate source of power. Um, you can recently see the spike in the cost, at least the um, societal cost of gasoline and gas products. Mm -hmm. So after COVID took place and they shut us all down and locked us all down and thousands and thousands of jobs are lost and businesses are lost and whatnot. And uh, the government put us on a, basically a social program, a CERB for a, a, a large portion of society. Well, now they're trying to recoup their losses you know, and I have to question the losses of what, because um, 
you know, finance is an agreement of value. And as far as I can see and witness, uh, observe is that uh, China, Russia, and the US, the three superpowers are not in agreement of value. So it's a game that they're playing with the majority of society's lives. Mm -hmm. And we're in the hinge, we're in the hinge of that. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I agree. I, I wish they kind of like made people more aware of what's going on instead of just you wake up and you see a new policy in place and you're like, what the hell? Like now we have to do this. Well, there's a saying forewarned is a uh, forearmed. And mm. um, you can see with the protests that are happening uh, around the globe, you know, from what we were talking earlier about at the airports and and right now at the, uh, the climate summit in Glasgow mm -hmm. uh, and the U.S. before that, when they, you know, bombarded and, and uh, rushed the, the house there, uh, the White House and the Senate, um, when people are forewarned, you know, they can organize themselves quite quickly through social media power. And uh, the, that's a threat to authorities. You right. Know? Which and is being when, censored. Well, what they're worried about is they're they're answering to the corporations and the wealthy. The government are representing those two sectors and themselves because let's face it, they're protectionists. They want a job too, you know. They can justify their behaviors because they want to protect their job. But what I think we need to get to is where it's not a us and a them. We're on one planet: the wealthy, the government, the corporations and society we're, we're on the same planet and we have to make policies and procedures that protect everyone's interests you know right. there's a, there's a, enough to go around especially um as we see the value uh, of cryptocurrencies skyrocketing oh yeah uh, because it is a form of rebellion against the establishment and the government was slow governments worldwide they did their best to uh suppress that yeah and the, the thing is you can't stop digital currency it's going to happen regardless now it's between is it decentralized or centralized currency that the government's going to have and regulated so what's happening is a lot of big influencers are receiving large amount of payments via pick uh, bitcoin just to make sure that's the mainstream trending topic but it's 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 a war it's a cryptocurrency war right now if you see what's going on with the government funny you say that um a lot of things turn into war mm -hmm. it's a war on drugs it's it's a it's a war. it's always been a war when we don't come into agreement and i i observe that um when we're not at an agreement, it's because uh, communication is being forced. It's not a willingness to sit down and listen and uh, make decisions that are best for, for all. It's the decisions right now are best for the government, the corporations and the wealthy. The wealthy are afraid because, you know, let's face it, society out, outnumbers them. They know that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, their toys are susceptible to 100,000 people attacking a boat, you know, mm -hmm. their, their billion dollar boats won't last very long when you right. have that many people uh, uh, showing up on, on and just taking over and that that mob mentality, you know, um, has been proven it takes over and they're, they're no longer thinking, you know, like uh, the cat in the hat thing one and thing two. Well, they're right. two different entities, but when they come together, they make thing three, you know. So um, if we could um, harness the collective energy of also society, the ones who want to be heard and help formulate, a, a, you know, a decisive logic and communication and representation to help out, I think we could move some mountains there by coming to the table and saying, listen, this is what the people are, want. We understand you have to run business as usual, mm -hmm. but um, money at the end of the day, brothers, is an agreement of value. It's a monopoly game board. And whether I'm holding, you know, 
fives, tens, ones, five hundreds printed on a monopoly board or digital currency from the fiat system, you know, or cryptocurrency or whatever we're holding, we have to agree on its value. Right. right. If we don't, if we don't, then we're burning our own bridges. So it's not good also for society, for mothers and fathers and families and schools and systems that are established just to destroy because we don't like something. So I'm not really down with destruction. You know, destruction is chaos. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that we're gonna move ahead. We're not gonna, at the end of the day, move ahead collectively in a positive way if we're just destroying things because we're angry. Yeah, it's um, it's it feels like such a digital dictatorship these days with online what you what you're able to see everything that's being censored how you move where you go so it's like you're also kind of being forced to go on the grid where um, everything is being watched which is okay because it's not like I have something to hide from the world which is completely normal right. but it's like when you bring in climate change and when you bring in carbon passes and how much you're allowed to travel because of the climate and now your freedoms are slowly just being taken away because you just want things to go back to normal. You would just want to go have a great time with your friends and family and enjoy life. But the system is coming at you like, hey, if you do this, we'll eventually go back to normal. If you do this, we'll eventually go back to normal. But we keep getting deeper and deeper and deeper and further away from what used to be normal. So when we see all these policies and cryptocurrencies and digital assets, it's like, are, I'm also questioning, are they removing us from the raw resources of gold, minerals, and everything that's limited on this earth? And then we're into just digital world realm. And then the digital realm can be shut down any day. I don't know, anything can happen. So that's the other question people have as in, is this a trap to remove our real life and go into the digital realm and, and add value to the metaverse than the real universe? I, and, and to what advantage does that give them ultimately? Because ult ultimately, uh, even if you look at the, the bee colony, you know, there is a queen bee who's, who's running things and all the workers know that they have a purpose in life, which is to serve the colony and ultimately the the queen because she you know uh is the provider of, of life ultimately so mm -hmm. that's my point is if we just uh interrupt disrupt and destruct society you know we're not helping ourselves collectively either no. you know so there needs to be a little calm before the storm that we you know develop a way of communicating say okay Okay, yes, we're angry. Okay, so part of healing is addressing the anger. What am I angry about? And then beyond the anger is, okay, so how are we going to... Because when you're angry, the, mm -hmm. the basic uh, emotion is fear. fear. Fear of loss of control. So, so what are they afraid of? They're afraid of, you know, the basic necessities. I, I want to be able to provide for my family and myself and I have a little bit extra so I'm not just just a worker you know I'd like to have a little bit of vacation time and and know that I have some resources left over in my storehouse so I can rest as as well that's it right you know, right but not everybody is a born natural leader to be the queen we can only have a few queens in the world uh, right. except for you know Elton John and a few queens you know that Love you, brother. But you know, yeah. we have some other queens, around, you know. Um, yeah. But uh, at the end of the day, the, the colony um, functions when everybody's in agreement of what their job is, and you know, even in the household, a, a dog feels better about his life when he feels he has a purpose. Mm -hmm. And when you take jobs away from the oil sector, and you take jobs away from the fisheries, and you take jobs away from the farming, and you take jobs away from banking, and you take jobs away from education, this is the problem, in my view, is that people feel uh, insecure, afraid. That's yep. what they're afraid of. How do I protect my family? How do I provide for my family? Well, when you have 
I have a friend who is engineering uh, the wings of planes. Uh, he, that's what he studied, engineering for that. I don't know what exactly what it's called, but he got laid off as soon as the pandemic hit because he wasn't. He studied his whole life for that. And just because everything was shut down, the economy was shut down, the technology is changing, there's like, sorry, we don't need you anymore. So people are kind of like, hey, we studied for, we got our degrees. We had, it took us 10 years to master something. And all of a sudden, the AI world has come in and has completely made us obsolete. What do we do now? No, I have to go drive Uber. Well, um, the other thing is, is to have some foresight. I mean, it's not like if they had a master's, it's not like they weren't privy to information about this coming as well. So right. part of uh, a fight in the ring, you know, as a boxer is being able to adapt. They're not, you're not fighting the same boxer in every ring. They're all, mm. it's, it's the same premise of fighting, but you're fighting a different fighter. And as a fighter, you have to be able to adapt to different styles coming in. So I would say to those masters, you know, maybe you stayed uh, kind of stagnant in, in your own thought and thought, because that's the what their parents did. They got a job and they, you know, they stayed at Ford right up until, the, you know, their retirement and, and then, you know, they, they died and the, and the kids are working at Ford, you know. So that mentality, even though they had a master's, was... I've got my master's. I've done my job. Now, now I know I'm okay. Well, try being in the music industry. <laughs> You're not okay, you know, just because because we used to print on vinyl, you know, right. and that was it. And then everyone lined up around the corner to purchase your next album because there was loyalty. There isn't anymore. No, there isn't. So, how do we adapt? to keep putting out what we want uh, as creators, because that's who we are as well. At least I am, I know you are. How do we adapt into the new fight and still come out being a contender? Right. I see that as decentralized platforms, which are peer-to-peer -peer communities, instead of having someone who's running it, who has no creativity, who doesn't know anything about the music, but it's controlling everybody else underneath them. Yeah, because they're essentially, <laughs> um, the, you're absolutely right. They're, they're so not creative that they actually depend on our creativity. Now, I don't find a problem with the fact that they can organize it either into some sort of channel, you know. But the artificial the, intelligence is doing that now, what they were doing. It is. It is. Or the artist and the community. So those those older models are yep. trying are also like the the people who worked in Ford who want to be so solid in what their thought was of what the record industry represented. I'm going to say this on here right now, Jason. The record companies are uh, representing a very small portion of the the world income. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sony in a quarter, you know, quarter two, quarter three is usually making $2 billion. Universal, maybe 3.5 billion. EMI, maybe two and a half billion. But the real record companies, excuse me, Bell, Rogers, Kojiko, AT&T, TELUS, British Telecom, so on. That's where the distribution is happening. They're, right. the, ones, they're the ones making super billions. So the record companies, to me, are just the, the licensors of the artists. And if the artists are empowered with the knowledge on how to protect their music, then we're talking about getting rid of the record company and just needing representation for licensing. And if you are savvy or you believe in someone else, then they can license your music for you, you know, and take a portion of that and administration and get you paid but it's one less company in between you yeah. and your money the exactly. problem is, the problem is in canada alone there are 38 companies saying that we can find your money for you well there's so many it's overrepresented so much they're finding the money all right but it doesn't make it to the artist's pockets that's the problem right well that's a big, big threat for these these corporations because 
for the last, I don't know, 50, 60 years, that's what's been, that's how they've been able to generate their wealth it's through exploitation without, you know? So when you can take that out of the equation, they're fucked, to be honest. <laughs> 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 so using technology being able to centralize that and control it that's the that's the direction where they they want us to go but people are slowly waking up and kind of realizing hey in order to make this world a better place than it was instead of going back to what it was we're gonna have to fight now to move forward yeah so it's a fight yeah. and it's, it's a battle for a few years until we see a big change. Well, I know for one, I've, I've, um, you know, been representing for the artists and taking on the establishment as far as the music industry goes and the, the performing rights organizations. But, you know, I did it as, as calmly as I am now. And if they feel threatened because we want to get paid, I have to say too bad. Um, then you were providing a disservice to creators and uh, circumventing laws that we ourselves would not be able to do legally. Mm -hmm. So um, we're here to say to those same corporates, um, you know, we understand you, you have a right to make a life for yourself too, but not without taking care of the actual creators, you know, even even the bees in the colony need a little honey, you know, to get on. And right. when we look when we look at the billions that we generate, and we're we're not getting enough to to make it through a single meal with our families when we've gone to school, uh, or or we've devoted our lives to music and and the craft of writing songs and engineering them, recording them, mastering the videography, the photography, the learning how to get it up on online and whatnot, only to find out that you're making micro, micro, micro pennies, but everyone else around you oh. is making billions. You know, right. it's out of balance. Yep. And that's and where we're here. And that's right. And that out of balance is we know it in, in our spirits and the collective of the society of musicians who fluctuates. Now, I think uh, so can is saying there's 175,000 of us registered mm -hmm. in Canada alone. That's not a small voice. You know, that's a that's a, a, a fair sized city. Yep. Coming to your coming to your door. Uh, and we appreciate that they have their cause, but when they're rewarding themselves with you know eighty to one hundred and twenty thousand dollars each year, and we're getting forty one dollars for an entire year of the same the same calendar year, it's just it's just out of balance. And, and it also hurts because the music industry um it, it, it sports small businesses as well because people get together to go enjoy entertainment right so restaurants and all these other venues that you're not able to attend because of what's going on right now and just it's 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 going virtual but artists artists also are not that familiar with the virtual world with the metaverse to be honest they don't know they just know what their craft is and it's like it's such a it's such a it's going to be a massive change because back in the day live music was much more appreciated um it had some so, so much it even does now but people don't really care they don't mind have going to a virtual concert sitting on zoom to be honest or having a vr on in their eyes and act being like they're on the you know they're there at the venue so that affects businesses as well it does. Um, so, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. No, it's okay. I just uh, I I look at the the you know the pandemic brought in quite a uh, instilled quite a fear of keeping people apart. You know. So, uh, and before that, prior to the pandemic, um, you know, it became quite costly to go out because 
you couldn't really relax and enjoy yourself and have a few drinks because you, you can't drive while drinking. And if you do and you get caught, you know, you're talking about losing your 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 uh, freedom of, of being able to drive, you know, and you need that for your job. So and then and then it attacked the, the film industry because people why would they have to go when you can buy a 65 inch uh, flat screen and put it on the wall and have a surround sound theater in your home you don't need to go to the theater and netflix you don't have to go to blockbuster either you know, spending 30 dollars on a bag of popcorn uh, you know uh, we love supporting the movies but come on a uh, 120 140 dollars for an average family to go see a movie it's, it's like a major bill to to go to see a movie and it shouldn't be you know we understand right. and and this is what generated the response by society was i don't have that money i can find the movies online i'll just download a cracked version for myself screw the system okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the system screwed itself out of the loyalty of the people that went to those institutions you know and now they're trying to win them back you know so remember netflix was nine dollars a month when it started out or 9.99 you know and it just keeps creeping up and creeping up because they you know they want to make more and more money and you know and then disney comes on the disney channel and soon we're back into we're back into basically a television model that's what they're trying to get back to because that's yeah. what made that's what made them again billions with a b right yeah. right with the audio streaming as well like it's um it changed. Growing up, all I had was Napster and download links, and I didn't have to worry about buying music. There were CDs. If I really loved the artist and I wanted to collect that piece, I would go purchase it. But majority of the music was literally free. Yeah. And you, I didn't even use YouTube, but even YouTube has YouTube pay now. Every I think every platform has that option to pay and get higher quality service and have your own channel. But you can also have your own as well. Absolutely. Now that that is the absolute uh, truth, it, and license your own music from artists and provide right. that as service. You know, just and I think I think these organizations should help you uh, build your own brand and act and become your partner instead of you being exploited or being working for them or you just being representative represented it on their platform they, they should have that technology to allow artists to develop themselves online while they register well um the thing is when they don't provide it because i agree with you but when they don't provide it what's happening is the necessity is creating other opportunities by other people making exactly what you're saying mm -hmm. the, the services to, to help provide that opportunity for you to to provide the service of licensing music and presenting it to people without having to go through those channels it's just it's just the mentality is bigger is better it's a bigger oh it's a bigger concert oh it must be better because there's you know oh there's two hundred thousand people at that concert oh it's crazy man it's so crazy you're you're you know three quarters of a mile back from a stage you can't even see what's going on but you were there you know Dude, there was a concert that just happened a few days ago. It was a hip hop concert, and they had eight or ten deaths of yes. kids, and some kids were apparently get being injected by some stuff there. Like there was something going on, so that's gonna instill some fear to go to big concerts because that was that was messed up. Whatever just happened right now. Yeah, did I you heard, did you hear about that? I did. I heard that um, some of the head security were getting uh, um, given drugs without their their knowledge you know they actually have pricks in their their uh, forearms or whatnot you know where they were injected into drugs without their permission you right. know and and so this chaos was created yep and yep. Who, and who knows i i don't want to speculate who's responsible but i have seen when when riots happen Mm -hmm. that there have been you know opposing sides who are instigating riots so i don't know i don't know who i'm sure we'll be able to see in the footage eventually and whatever they tell us you know from their investigation yeah, yeah. 
Interesting. So I think that's pretty much for today. I don't if there's anything else you want to talk about. Um, no, I think that's a I think that's a great start for for today's uh, podcast and reaching out to people. And uh, you know, I had a great time with you again as always, Jason. Speaking yeah. about uh, what matters most, at least Dude. to us. By the time we wake up tomorrow, we're gonna have a whole new set of headlines ready. Ready. It's it's. I think in a few hours we're gonna have more headlines for tomorrow. Absolutely. So we'll talk soon. Okay. Mr. Guru. Yes, sir. All right. Have, have a wonderful day. day. Bro. Okay. You too. Bye bye. Bye.